In the past few videos in the picture car series, I've tried to piggyback off of recent events. I enjoy doing that, but I really want to talk about Baby Driver's WRX STI, and I don't know when it would be appropriate to do that. I could wait for a model redesign, but I don't know when that would be. Actually, it looks like they might do a reveal this year. I can't wait that long. Can you guys? So what's been happening in the world recently? Uh, Superman and Lois premiered last last Tuesday. With the lull in the TV lineup this week for that show, maybe I can try putting something together for the TV viewers. In the first episode, they obviously had to do an homage to Action Comics 1 with the Green PT Cruiser. A bold choice, but that car is a little boring. I know, let's talk about the 5th gen F-Series family truck. Let's dissect the truck and identify it a little bit more than just a Ford truck. There are so many things we could look at for identification purposes, and surprisingly, in the first episode we get a lot of good angles. Let's start with the easiest identifier. Unlike more recent years when grille stays the same and can be optioned out to different trim levels, each year of the Gen 5 truck came with grille updates. The middle vertical line means we have now closed in to the 1970 and 1972 years. The thin meshing is hard to isolate, but the look of the 1970 grille is more in line with what was shown on screen. Let's try to confirm that with more clarity. The steering wheel also changed between the model year 1970 and 1971, we go from a three-spoke to a two-spoke wheel. We get very little imagery inside the cabin though, but if we pause in the first shot of Clark right before he reveals his identity to his boys, and then let's increase the brightness, we can see three spokes and the texturing that is also found on the 1970 steering wheel. So I can confirm this is a 1970 F-Series truck. When just focusing on the story, this truck could be one of two things, which I'm going to get into later. But again, during the scene where Clark finally reveals his super identity to his sons, he lifts the car and we get to see the undercarriage of the truck. We get a washed out look, but the profile is clear in the front steering suspension assembly. And we discover that this is a rear wheel drive truck. So we have the model year and the drive type. Let's figure out the size of this truck as in, is it an F100 or F250 or even the F350. I'm going to first try to figure out the size the easy way, the front fender badging. Well, there's an easier way, but since this isn't a crew cab, we can't knock anything off. But later on in that same scene, Jordan and Jonathan are at the same depth of field as the badging, which would identify the F100 or F250 model. And there's no identification, which sort of feels like they don't want us to know the identity of the truck. There's not a whole lot we can look at with the angles that we have, but we can look at the front brakes actually to figure out if it's the 100 or 250 level. Normally we wouldn't have a shot of that, but Clark gives us a good hero shot. And if we pause just right, we can see the drum within the wheel well. And if that's hard to identify for you, then we can see the absence of brake calipers, which would be present on disc brakes. And since rear-wheel drive F-250s had front disc brakes, we can rule it out and call it a 1970 Ford F-100. It's an odd choice for the farm truck. I've been saying the phrase, it's an interesting choice, when what I really mean is there's something not quite right about it, but I hate saying I don't like this car. I don't like that they chose a rear-wheel drive option and then showed us the undercarriage on the first episode. There, I said it. I don't like something about a Superman screen appearance. <sighs> Dead. Because of this, so here's the thing, this truck would better serve the story as a four-wheel drive F100, but we can't force that storyline since it's obviously rear-wheel drive and so doesn't have the power. So I'm guessing the reason they ground down the badging to rid itself of identifying marks was so that the audience can assume it's the higher-powered F250. Farm trucks would need that three-quarter ton option in order for them to be viable, hence the 1970 F250 would be better than the F100. The marketing campaign of the time for F-Series trucks had the slogan, works like a truck, rides like a car. So here's how I imagine the justification of the F100 over the F250 went down in the writing room. 
Someone probably said, Well, Smallville is going through a financial crisis with this Morgan Edge guy. Wow. So we set the scene with a truck that doesn't, but also does make sense? Oh, that's exciting. We'll say Ma and Pa Ken bought the cheapest truck, but then kept it all these years so that they can save money. Well, okay then. This concept has been the trend since the beginning of Smallville's visual appearance. Typically setting the scene that the town is more thrifty and less poor. In 1978, when the first big screen Superman was revealed to the world, Richard Donner's team chose a 1939 GMC AC series. And with that, the precedent for the Kent family truck was set. I can't think of a single on-screen iteration when the franchise didn't depict the Kent farm having their reliable truck on scene. Many even have the truck in the critical moment of Kal-El's discovery, and I think that is what makes it such an important part of the screen image. If we think about cars as story drivers, like I talked about with Tony Stark's Audi e-tron GT, then there are consistent situations that vehicles can be in. I've talked about exposition passenger scenes and car chases before. These two circumstances progress the story from one location to another through a slow process, and the reason I say slow is because even a high-speed chase takes several minutes before it gets resolved. However, there is one circumstance repeated time and time again that give abrupt change to the story. Car accidents. Even if the scene setting before it was a five-minute road scene, the progress isn't felt until that sudden shift in storytelling. In every scenario, a car crash results in character-changing injury, memory loss, or even death. What makes the Kent truck so special is that this car is present in a moment when the passengers have the opposite experience. They gain a life. Jonathan and Martha become the adoptive parents to the last son of Krypton. Now, if we pay close attention to Superman's on-screen story through time, the more time focused on Smallville, the more screen time the truck has. But, and let's look at Man of Steel for this, the more attention we give to the Kal-El nature of Superman, the less focus there is on the truck. In Man of Steel, we have the landing scene, but we don't have the discovery scene. And maybe it's not causation, but the effect this has on the movie leads to a couple different vehicles being used in the Smallville family scenes. The blue truck, when John tells Clark that maybe it would have been best to let the bus go. A red truck, when the bullies come a-knockin'. The station wagon leading up to the fateful tornado. And during the final scene in the graveyard when Martha describes a flashback of John working on that blue truck that later gets parked indefinitely. The discovery scene, the life-giving scene, is not there, and so the vehicle offers no significance to the story. It's not a gripe about Man of Steel. There are two sides to the Superman character, Kal-El and Clark Kent. Zack Snyder's whole Superman story is of an alien with godlike powers sent to Earth to save it. It contrasts from the wealth of visual literature which presents the boy raised in Kansas to become a hero. I think the latter story is important, but I think Zack's story is largely untold and needed to be shared. In case you didn't clue in, I'm incredibly excited for March 18th and the continuation to the story of Kal-El, and I'm really excited for the accompanying Picture Cars video, so stay tuned. Last little tangent, and this one has sometimes been keeping me up at night. Does Clark even need to start the truck? Like, does he use gas? Because he should just be able to grip at a chassis point and, with his super strength, just fly forward enough that he's propelling the car on the road. Like, maybe he has his hand on the A-pillar and the other on the steering wheel, just riding down the highway? And with the tires rolling on the ground, I feel like it wouldn't be that weird for passers-by. Yes, there's sound, but tires over dirt and gravel roads... Even electric cars would make quite a bit of noise. Just something to think about. We have this question that I want everyone watching to have in the back of their mind. The question being, is this the right vehicle for the character? Generational vehicles always make this question difficult to answer. We have sometimes very different personalities in combination with the same vehicle environment. It's not an impossible scenario because usually that background has a sort of tying effect. Like if you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, 
The environmental commonality leads to a sense of unity in these best case examples. Separating it out, is this the right vehicle for Jonathan and Martha Kent? I'll go ahead and say yes. But is this the best vehicle for Clark and Lois? The debate will rage on because if your Superman is sentimental, then the answer is yes. But if your Superman is practical and efficient and about to reopen the Kent farm with a Volvo V70 and a 5th gen F100, then I think it's safe to say the answer is no. Me personally, I like to think my Superman is a problem solver and quick to the solution. But I also think the F100 is sentimental, and should be kept around, passed on to John and Jordan. But I think it would better serve the story if in a future episode, Clark went to get a used truck with his sons as a bonding experience. And we all know that bonding experience with both sons is something he sorely needs. But Clark, first. Get a job, you bum! Especially after getting fired. Thanks for watching. I have a lot of fun making these videos, and if you have another car you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button and make sure to subscribe because there's more content coming your way. If you feel so inclined, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.